Meat eating trend is not new. Humans have been eating meat since their existence. But when our ancestors started consuming meat, it was not for pleasure. Two million years ago, the earth was too hot to grow veggies, so it was for their survival. Fast forward to many years, fire, agriculture, and the industrial revolution came. But our nature changed from being survivors to silent killers. Today, we consume over 365 million tons of meat every year. And on top of the list, we have countries like US and Australia, where people eat around 264 pounds of meat per person per year. But the more meat we produce, the more carbon dioxide we send to the atmosphere, which is now contributing to climate concerns. Do you know that the food industry itself is contributing to one third of all greenhouse gas emissions across the globe, and the meat industry only is contributing 60% of it, making it the biggest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. Now some people might claim to cut out meat altogether from our diet and become vegetarian or vegan. Well, on surface it looks like a solution, but unfortunately it's hard to reverse the meat eating trends. First, because you cannot convince everyone to give up on some food habits that they have always followed. Second, agriculture won't be able to bear the burden as it itself is a big source of deforestation and greenhouse gas emissions. So what's the solution? anything that won't harm nature and is also sustainable for years our scientists have been working hard to find an alternate and now we have it cultivated meat which is now becoming from an idea to a reality a technology with a lot of controversies concerns and complex economics is finally taking shape after receiving clearance from FDA in 2022 last week the US Department of Agriculture has approved the lab grown meat to be sold in US After these approvals many are hoping that it's just the beginning to save our planet while many people still claim that the process from lab to plate is not what it claims to be and it's just too good to be true in this story today we will talk about cultivated meat we will see what is cultivated meat and how it is produced is it really good for the climate and on par with all the claims that it does we will also see why many people are still challenging this revolutionary tech And finally we'll see what the future looks like for the lab grown food. So if you're interested in diving into this revolutionary food tech that can disrupt the food industry, then stick around. Before meat comes to the plate, it goes through a lot. The conditions where animals are kept before slaughtering are non-imaginable. These animals are injected with growth hormones to fulfill the meat demand. Also animals use a lot of water, land and food. Some animals also produce methane gas to increase the greenhouse emissions in the environment. For example, a single cow consumes 11,000 gallons of water and produces around 200 pounds of methane gas per year. And it takes at least 2 years for a cow to get ready to be slaughtered. But cultivated meat is different. It's not made by slaughtering any animal. Instead, it's made from the cells of these animals and then grown in a lab. The cells are kept in a temperature controlled environment and given the oxygen and nutrients like amino acids, salts, sugars, vitamins and minerals to be grown to become meat. These things are the same as the cells would normally get inside of an animal body, but in this case they are getting them in a stainless steel cultivator. After 2 to 3 weeks these cells are grown and multiplied. Now the cultivated meat is ready to harvest and formulate to come to your plate. This tech is called the cellular agriculture. The technology was introduced to the public back in 2013 when the first burger was tested on a live TV show in London. After that many companies have been formed. Today there are more than 150 companies in this space and more than 3 billion dollars are invested in this technology to make lab grown meat a reality. As per the claims a single cell would be grown into 1 trillion muscle cells. A company named Mosa Meat claims that with a cell of sesame size 80,000 burgers could be made. For environment friendliness, researchers claim that the cultivated meat would consume 45% less energy, emit 96% less greenhouse gas, require 99% less land, and drain 96% less water. After all these claims, one question definitely comes to our mind: Is lab-grown meat safe for us? Well, it's hard to say because on paper it is. But in reality, we don't have much evidence or data to justify this claim. Unless it is mass produced and then consumed, we don't know much about its long-term impacts. On paper reports say that there will be less contamination due to the sterile conditions required for the cell proliferation.
but still many people believe that the cell cultured meat could pose unforeseen health risk one such risk is that the cells grown in the lab are out of a fully functional immune system so there may be potential risk of contamination the center for food safety says that it's unknown whether the lab grown meat will pose any more or fewer safety concerns than traditional meat but this is about the potential harms what about nutrition and this one is little tricky and again as of now we don't have much practical data everything is on paper but reports say that similar to plant based food lab meat will also miss out on a few ingredients such as vitamin b12 now to add these ingredients meat could be genetically modified or these supplements could be added after producing the meat but as of now no one is putting more focus on these aspects scientists claim that it is achievable and lab grown meat could be made super nutritious If we see these numbers lab grown meat is both ethically and environmentally safer than the traditional meat but it does not mean that there are no concerns as with any new tech there are many concerns the first big concern is cost the process to make lab grown meat is far more expensive than the traditional approach to feed raise and slaughter animals it is so expensive that the first lab grown burger patty in 2013 cost around $330000 it was then funded by google's co-founder sergey brin So there have been a significant drop in the cost since then and in a decade the same burger patty now costs less than $10 but still it is more expensive than a traditional burger patty Another concern is scaling issues the lab grown meat has to be formulated in a very expensive custom made bio reactor which will then be filled with a specially formulated liquid made with purified water and then other growth factors like amino acids glucose and salts are required On top of this the facility and the bioreactor need to be totally sterilized because even a small amount of dust bacteria or virus could ruin the entire batch wasting a lot of money but more than that there is one time cost of the facility it cost around 450 million dollars to make a facility producing just 22 million pounds of lab meat a year while it might sound like a lot of meat this is a very small amount as compared to the 100 billion pounds of meat that the US makes per year So one facility can only produce just 0.022% of US meat production and to create the facility itself with this price point it's a 2 trillion dollar of investment up front. So there are definitely issues in scaling lab grown meat to the conventional way of raising cattle and making meat. Another concern with the lab grown meat is its potential environmental impact. While cultivated meat is claimed to be more environment friendly than meat coming from the animals as it is predicted to consume less land water and greenhouse gases than raising cattle but according to a research at the University of California Davis lab grown or cultivated meats environmental impact is likely to be in orders of magnitude higher than retail beef based on current and near term production methods as per Davis Department of Food Science and Technology if this product continues to be produced using the pharma approach it is going to be worse for the environment and more expensive than conventional beef production The study found that the global farming potential of lab-based meat using these purified media is 4 to 25 times greater than the average for retail beef. Now, after all this investment, another concern that comes from the lab-grown meat is the widespread adoption. As of now, there are two groups of people. One group that thinks about the climate impact and the cruelty with animals, and they are open to adopting the lab-grown meat if it is solving those problems. And then there is another group that does not want any change with their eating habits and does not trust lab grown food especially when big corporations are involved according to a survey conducted in 2017 on a group of people out of all people they surveyed two third of people were willing to try lab grown meat but only one in three was willing to eat it as a regular replacement for conventional meat now comes the most important topic What is the future of lab grown meat? In the US, the cultivated meat industry is regulated by both FDA and USDA. Last year in November 2022, FDA gave green signal to Upside Foods, and in March 2023, Good Meat got FDA approvals. Last week, the US Department of Agriculture granted approvals to both of these California-based companies to produce and sell their cultivated chicken products to the public under the name Sell Cultivated Chicken. Getting approvals to sell the lab grown meat in US is a big milestone for the cultivated meat industry. Before US in 2020, Singapore became the first country to approve the sale of lab grown meat products. 
For now, these approvals are provided only for chicken-based products in US. Other animal products like beef or pork also have to go through the same approval process. But this is just the beginning and only the future can tell if the lab-grown meat is a sustainable alternative to conventional meat or not. While we have the technology and approvals to bring meat from lab to plate, definitely more research, investment and regulations will be required to examine the pros and cons. By the way, it is predicted that by 2040, lab-grown meat could account for 40% of all meat consumption. Till then, we only hope that the tech, research, government and regulations work in parallel to solve the food concerns in the world. We are living in 21st century, where we talk about robots and AI advancements, sitting in our AC homes and offices. But somewhere, someone is working hard day and night to make the food available for their family. We need affordable food now more than ever. The COVID pandemic has increased the world hunger to another level. According to United Nations, more than 811 million people are undernourished. Overall, 2.3 billion people struggled with adequate access to food in 2020 and were considered to have moderate or severe food insecurity. If we can make cultivated food more affordable and accessible, it can help feed the entire world. So that's about the cultivated meat industry. Let us know what you think about this revolutionary food technology. Do you want to try out lab-grown meat? Let us know in the comments below. Till then, if you have enjoyed this video, please do like it. If you are new here, please subscribe to the channel and help us grow. We are trying to bring more amazing business stories to you. Also, let us know what other business stories you would like to see. With that said, I shall catch you in the next one. Thank you and have a nice day.